Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this topic is uh, near and dear to my heart just because, you know, I really feel like this is, this is where we are in the evolution of securing these industrial environments. You know, and I, I start off with this slide because, you know, every company probably feels this way when security's brought up about their OT environment, right? So lots of questions. They have lots of choices, they're getting advice from everyone, and at the same time, they are getting attacked. And then, you know, they have to respond to that, and they have no way to really do that efficiently and effectively. So you end up with these results like you see in, you know, Colonial Pipeline, you know, the ransomware, which didn't hit their OT environment, but they basically shut down the OT environment, and some people may not know why, but the reason is there are regulations that say that they must measure the fuel that goes through their pipeline. If they can't measure that, which is done in the corporate side, they can't deliver the fuel or else the, that, that could be a, another problem, you know, theft of fuel, using it for, you know, malicious purposes and so on. So everybody's learning. This is kind of the day of, of you know, what is it, you know, that I need to do to protect this company at the same time use all this new technology to advance the company. So you hear a lot of this, I'm sure you've already heard that. I know from the, the panel I was just on, we mentioned some statistics and so on. But, but I, the one thing I wanna point out here with this chart is the shift from financial services, which has always been the number one industry attacked. So it was for financial gain. Now that's moved over to what it shows here is manufacturing or industrial critical infrastructure, right? So there's a lot more, you know, cyber attacks, you know, huge percent, but again, don't get fooled by the percentage, you know, where were you starting from to grow, you know, so these percentages don't think about it as being, wow, that's incredible, but, but the fact is it's happening. So that just take that as what it is. Um, and, and it is an attractive target, you know, in nation states, criminal gangs, organizations, you know, they have a real interest in gathering data, attacking these environments, shutting them down. That's really their goal, right? So it has a real political goal here, and it is cyber warfare. You know, we've heard about cyber warfare. You read about it years ago. The battlefield is now the internet, right? I don't need to send troops. Hey, I can attack you from afar, right? Right through the internet. And if I can bring down, say, your utility grid, that's gonna make a lot of people uncomfortable because it'll stop a city in pretty quick. So it's that kind of thing that motivates these, you know, these cyber uh, attackers and malicious actors, I should say. So, so then that, that begs the question, what are we doing about it? Okay, so, all right, we know that. We're hearing it from everybody. And if you are a company that has an industrial environment, energy and utilities, manufacturing all types, you know, oil and gas, consumer goods, you know, food processing and that sort of thing, um, all those types of manufacturing or industrial environments are, would be considered critical infrastructure. So what's typically happening? What's the number one thing that these companies do to start with? Well, they need visibility. And so they, they are, they're so immature, they're like, well, I don't even know how many OT devices I have, or even IT systems running in the industrial environment. They have no idea. They don't really even have a good idea of what their network looks like, so they need visibility. And of course, if I can get some insight into what kind of vulnerabilities I have, that would be nice, right? So that's that visibility. And companies that kind of get in this classification of OTIDS, as you can see here, install an OTIDS product, that'd be like Clarity. Clarity is uh, sponsoring this event. Clarity produces a product called, you know, uh, their CTD uh, product, which is an OTIDS. Fits in that category. Gives you the visibility I'm talking about. What are my devices? What's my network look like? What are my vulnerabilities? 
even will capture the process changes, right? So it does a little bit of that, and all does that, can do that passively through basically packet analysis. That's how they do that. And, um, and that's where a lot of companies start because they just feel like, I just don't know, you know, what's going on in those environments. And most don't have one factory. They have lots of factories, right? So some of the bigger players in the world, hundreds of factories. So you think about, okay, I've spent the last 30 years trying to get this mature program based on lots of different frameworks out there, you know, like ISO 27002 and uh, NIST and so on. Well, now they've got to take that and apply it to an environment that's a whole lot more complex, a whole lot more complex, and they have no idea. And guess what? The next step that they do is they want to connect it directly to a SOC because in their mind is if I can get the vulnerability data and I can even check for malwares on the, uh, on the network, you know, based on some sort of signature file, you know, that's how they do it. And then you can bring that into a SOC. I can have real people look for that and then I can do something about it, right? Okay. It kind of makes sense. I'm going to tell you in a minute why it doesn't, but it kind of makes sense. But that's what everybody's doing because somewhere along the line, they were taught by companies like Clarity, that's what you should do, right? You should do that. And that's their job to do that because they have a product that helps you do that, right? So then, you know, implementing an OT identity management solution. Most have not, not even advanced to that yet not even advanced to that. So Clarity also offers secure remote access, another product within their suite. Okay, great, but most companies aren't even there yet. They have no idea. And then they get all kinds of pushback, right? The pushback says, okay, everybody working in that environment, my engineers, you know, my operators, and then my vendors, third party, you know, vendors that are coming and going. Some of these third parties, by the way, work in these environments their whole career. But they're another company. <laughs> they're not the company. And, and these guys are coming and going, all right? And they do have the concept of physical security. Learned that a long time ago. Um, and safety, the big thing, they you know, these environments are generally not safe. And they've learned that a long time ago, and it's very regulated. But... They don't want to monitor the people coming and going, and they certainly don't want to lock down the systems because now they say, well, wait a minute. What would happen if I have a process breakdown and now I forget my password? That's usually an excuse I hear, one of them. Um, and they're like, no, no, I, you know, we could never have anything like that. So you have to have a system that's introduced with lots and lots of training. And then governance program. Well, I'd like to say most companies have never got to that part, really. You know, the number one problem we have um, when it comes to the governance is there isn't a strategy. They have not advanced to the point to say, okay, we're really going to do this. Remember, we're going to take that 30 years of experience I have building up a very mature security program in corporate and I'm going to apply it over here to my industrial environment. And the first question I would ask as a consultant is, who's in charge? Who's responsible for this security program that you're going to apply across all of your industrial environment? And they don't know. They have no idea. The CISO says, I, I don't, I'm not the right person for that because I don't know industrial environments. You know, I know corporate, because that's what I was trained on. I know that. I know how to apply all those controls and so on. I get that. I'm not so good over here. And in, in the industrial environment, they're like, hey, don't point me. I mean, I, I have no idea either. So, and you get this conflict. Now, you'll notice that over the past few years, that there is a trend. The trend is the CISO is getting this. Whether they like it or not, they are getting assigned. You are going to go and you're going to implement 
security program across their industrial environment. So now they got to figure out, well, okay, what do I do? You know, what's first? And I'd say that the, the strategy they, they need is to, you can see kind of on the right side of this slide is, what are my risks? Like I said, it's a, these are big, complex environments. This isn't an office environment. We're not just churning data. We're not just having to protect our data. No, it's more than that. Yes, we do have data too in those environments. But we also have very unsafe environments that are protected by safety systems, right? We have processes that are, you know, basically all that process data goes into a story and we have SCADA systems. The SCADA systems are set by SCADA engineers. You kind of follow the process, right? What's a SCADA engineer do? A SCADA engineer is going to set all those devices out there to certain thresholds and say, okay, I need to make sure I'm watching whether or not the heat on the boiler is at a certain temperature, and if, if it exceeds that, I need to take action, right? That's what these guys do, and they're constantly you know, working with those things. And now we've introduced change because now we're putting IoT devices in there, robotics, and, and new networks, right? So wireless networks, 5G, all this new technology is being implemented in these environments. And why? Because they need to improve them. They need to be always, companies are trying to be more effect, effective and more efficient and more competitive all the time. Now they can do that in these industrial environments. But what's the risk? Always ask these companies, if you want to think about your risk, think about it in kind of a quantitative way. And you can use that back to financials, which is probably the easiest. And you say, okay, what manufacturing facility or facilities produce the most money for me? Or take a different example. What industrial environment serves my critical customer? Let's suppose you're uh, developing some sort of uh, medical devices. And I'm, uh, my client is a small client, but it's a hospital. Well, if I can't produce the devices or I produce them inaccurately, see, that's the other thing people don't think about. They think about, oh, I have process breakdown, and oh my goodness, that's terrible because I instant loss of revenue, right? I'm no longer producing, and these guys have to produce, you know, 24 7. Well, what if I were the malicious actor and I go in and I change the way things are being manufactured? So now, Everything I'm making is being made improperly. And then what if I go in and sabotage the QA system? A lot of them have QA systems. They check, right? They don't want bad goods to go out the door. So what if I actually were to change the QA system and now bad products going out the door, okay? And maybe good product is being kicked out, right? This is a, this is a real use case. Um, and now I've got a real problem. So now this is going out, and, and, um, and at, at best, you know, customers get it, and they want to ship it back. It's broken. It doesn't work, right? So they're now, now you've got this return, and that's, that costs you money. It costs you time, money. It could you know, tarnish your brand. If it's something like food, it can really get a lot of people sick. It could get you know, people killed. Right? So you can see the scenarios, right? This, these environments, it, it, what happens if I lose my data? Ah, oh, everybody complains about it. Okay, you know. Oh, I might change my credit cards and I gotta do some, it's, it's, a, it's a hassle. On the other side, on OT, this is huge. This is, this is dangerous, it can have huge impacts to the economy. It could be life or death. This is different, very different. And yet, we're not prepared from a cybersecurity standpoint to do what we need to do to protect those environments. So I want to talk a little bit more about the OT security governance program. And let's talk about the organization. This is really where people should start. Instead of jumping right in and getting that visibility, now I'm saying it's a terrible thing, but maybe you do it at the same time. Build a RACI. You know, we've been talking about races for 30 years. I mean, that's not a new concept, is it? I mean, right? Roles, responsibilities. Who's responsible, right? Who's accountable? Uh, you know, and then 
who, who do I communicate with, you know, and, and, and who, who do I basically inform, right? So that's racy. Well, how many companies take the time to really document the processes and assign the roles? You typically put a name to it last, but the roles that would be responsible, accountable, et cetera, for these processes. Very rare, unless you're audited, of course. And the auditors, hey, you got to have one. And then you got to ask the question, is it current? <laughs> but once you do that, though, amazing things can start happening. Because if I'm an operator, I'm an engineer, I'm a third-party contractor, now you're coming to me and saying, hey, Rob, guess what? You're, we're going to make you responsible for this process. And let's say that it's, it's a particular manufacturing process and now I'm, I'm the asset owner. Oh, wow. What's that mean to be an asset owner? Well, what it means is I want you to account for everything there. I want you to have an inventory of all the assets on your production line. You're the asset owner. Why is that important to security? Well, because if we have an incident and I've got to resolve that incident and quickly, much faster than what we do in the corporate space. In the corporate space, what's the process? In the SOC, I find an incident and we create a ticket. And that ticket then goes through a process, right, based on a priority. Typically, we'll go to an IT team, right? It could go to an incident response team. It depends. But for the most part, I'd say 90 plus percent will go just to the IT team. Okay, you got an incident, we got to resolve this, and they take action, right? That, and it's all based on a ticket and a priority system, all that. In an industrial environment, you don't have time for that. If you have a serious incident, let's say ransomware, and you haven't prepared, well, you get Colonial Pipeline. If you have prepared, and you're fast, I've got my asset owners, I've got my process owners, I know who my stakeholders are, let's put it that way. And I even know where my devices are, where the processes are happening. So now I say, okay, fine, this is coming from this plant in this region, and it's even right there in this particular network. If I did my job right, guess what? I can quarantine that network. Doesn't affect the rest of the plant. Right? I can, doesn't affect the manufacturing across the world. I can narrow it down to that. And then I can take my, a little more time, investigate, get the malware out. Right? We got to get to that fast. Every company with industrial environments got to get to the point to be able to execute on what I just said, that little scenario. Because lives can be a danger. You know, if they're affecting the safety system, we found, oh my gosh, the safety system has now been attacked and now it's not working and it's a very dangerous environment, people are maybe walking into danger, right? We better identify it, identify where it is, take action quickly, you know, pick up the phone, call that stakeholder that's responsible for that process, stop everything, right? You know, and let's get this resolved. Okay, that's, that's organizationally. The processes, you need to know what the processes are. If you just kind of heard my scenarios, I mentioned process many times. Industrial environments are, are all built around processes, right? So you can think of that as an assembly line. It's a process, right? Lots of different processes, you know, from, you know, goods coming in, goods going out, right? That's kind of a simple process. There's, it's lots more complicated, of course, but you, you need to know what those processes are and you need to be able to document those and then everything's got to tie together. Um, and those OTIDS products will help tremendously in helping you do all of this. Um, what technologies do you need for security? I mean, this is daunting as it is. Uh, I was just at RSA. I don't know if any of you guys went to RSA in San Francisco a couple weeks ago, but I was there. And my first impression was, we have way too many companies dealing with cybersecurity. You know, you imagine you're the CISO sitting back here and you're going, everybody's trying to sell me something. And there's lots of redundancy. And of course, everybody, oh, this is better than that. And woo, it's just confusing to say the least. Well, what do you need in these OT environments? It's kind of getting there now. It's starting to ramp up. You're seeing more and more companies. You're producing products for those environments. And, you know, what do I need? Where do I start? You know, and all this. So, so it's, a, it's an issue that we've got to deal with as we go through that journey 
Um, and every company should deal with that in their own unique way, but they have to deal with that. And, and I, would, I would say one thing about the technology, avoid redundancies. I see this a lot for some strange reason, and usually it has to do, that's where we come to this technology thing, you know, somebody with real passion for, say, Microsoft, I'm buy everything Microsoft just because I love Microsoft. Or it's another vendor, you know, I love, love that vendor, I'm going to buy everything that vendor. But then you end up with this thing where I've seen um, two OTIDS products, say a, a Clarity and a Tenable. Same environment. Well, that's, why would you do that? Well, because these people like these products, they like the salesperson here, and like a salesperson here. Well, now you're spending too much, but worse than that, you're creating complexity you don't need especially now. You have redundant technologies. All you're doing is creating complexity. And it is more expensive when we're not trying to save money. Everybody has limited budgets. That's another part of what we're missing here is getting good budgets. So need my stakeholders? Who's in charge? Then I need to go and ask for money. But you're not going to get the money unless you are able to say, I need to do these things, these projects. So all of that and to be able to measure it Reporter it, you know, that, that's what we need from a good governance standpoint. I like to show this chart because if you are in the security profession, this should resonate. This is a reference model for a good security program. And if you have been working in this area, you know that every one of these things probably exists in your corporate environment one way or another. All right, so some might be bigger focuses than the other, but you probably have a bit of everything in this. Now we go over to our industrial environment, and what do we have? Barely infrastructure, right? We're, we're like, you know, you point out here, identity and access management, probably not there. Data security, no way. Uh, application security, hmm, that's kind of a thing we're going to worry about that with our suppliers, right? We sure hope the suppliers are handling application security, and then we end up with malware built in. Trisis, remember that one with the Siemens? That's a, you know, uh, an issue where the supply chain was broken because they didn't catch the malware in their development process, right? Um, systems and infrastructure security is where we're starting, as I mentioned earlier before. But if you start looking around this reference model, it's a great reference model because that's where we will be. Fast forward a few years, we will be, but it's going to take a lot of effort, and a lot of focus, and a lot of budget. A good security program is, in my mind, and, and this is somewhat of an IBM point of view, but I think this, I, this point of view is shared by a lot. Um, this is the NIST CSF, right? Cybersecurity framework. And the NIST CSF, I think, portrays a good security program because it's a continuum. A continuum says there's no start and there's no end, right? So it's never ending. But in a perfect world, and where we want to be is where we have 24 by 7 real time insight into my environment at all times. I want to know what my devices are, even if they're being changed, right? So I want to know all the time what are my devices? You know, what's my data? And what data is sensitive data, right? And am I protecting it? Um, users, we've got to know those. Your process baseline mentioned before, compliance requirements, threats, and your vulnerabilities. You, you want to know those at all times, in real time, right? Then you can protect that, that's the next column. What kind of controls, you know? And then you would hear this always from your auditors, are those controls operating effectively? That's what they audit for, are they operating effectively? And if they're not, you wanna be able to detect that. And that's your SOC and a few other things listed here, right? That Detect those when those controls are no longer working as planned. So then you can respond to that, fix that proactively, and get back to business as usual. This is a good security program with all those things that you saw on the chart before. And um, that's where I'll leave it with you and just uh, say, hey, you know, if this is your focus for your career, then I'd say you're on an exciting journey. It's going to be an exciting journey. 
you can work in this space for the rest of your career, no matter what age you are, is I'm going to tell you this is going to be a, a, a great, exciting journey for security professionals, and, and we will be adding lots of value. So I would encourage you to dig in and, you know, be curious, you know, help your, your leadership team figure this out, help them get closer and closer to that, that uh, what I call best practice uh, security program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. That was really, really a great presentation. Um, I actually did have a question that came through through our app for you um, about the role in of 5G within the industrial Internet of Things, and if that's going to help matters later on, or <laughs> if well, it's causing more problems. Yeah, yeah. 5G is is just one other thing. It's a, a new approach that we're using to really reduce the latency of trying to get data to the cloud, right? We want to use 5G, and what we're doing is using 5G, you know, to point it into the manufacturing environment. So remember I said networks are changing, right? So we're going w away from the actual wired networks that we're all familiar with to go into wireless. Well, this is part of that wireless program because when you have lots more IoT and robotics and things like that, you're not going to wire those up anyway. You're going to you're going to use that wirelessly, and the 5G allows us to do that because it gives us, you know, uh, a low latency, high bandwidth uh, option. You know that we can then get that data moved around within that target industrial environment. Mainly, manufacturing's moving that direction. So 5G good. 5G is good, <laughs> and, and it's going to be more prevalent. <laughs> so yeah, get yep. ready. It's not going away. Nope. <laughs> thank you very much. That was great. Okay. Thank Just you. Appreciate it. Thank you.